This is Detective Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a psychological thriller film called One Hour Photo. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Seymour Sy Parrish is a mild and innocuous looking man who is currently having his mugshots taken. Sai works as a photo developer in a one hour photo finishing booth in a mall, and now he is being questioned by the police for illegally keeping someone else's family photos. Sai has become quite familiar with his customers through their photos, but he has a special liking to one particular family, the Yorkins. One day, Nina Yorkin visits the shop with her son, Jake. For the finishing of the boy's ninth birthday photos, he notices a book among Nina's things, so he strikes a conversation with her. But the more the two of them talk, the more apparent it is that Sai knows more about her family than he ought to. Seeing as Nina's camera has one more roll left, Sai insists on using it and takes a photo of himself. Naturally, this makes the woman just a little bit uncomfortable. While Nina goes grocery shopping, Sai begins to develop the photos. It's very clear that he loves his job, he thinks highly of it too, and for him, mastering the art of it requires more than just a little training. After one hour, Nina and Jake return to claim the photos, and Sai continues to flirt with the boundaries of professionalism by being a lot friendlier to them than he needs to be. He even gives Jake a new camera as a birthday gift. That same night at the Yorkin residence, the whole family is happily checking the photos. When Nina's husband, Will, notices Sai's photo, he tosses it to the table to be discarded since the man isn't part of their family. Meanwhile, Sai is having dinner in a restaurant and is looking at the Yorkin family's photos that he secretly copied for himself. Noticing the photos, the waitress asks if he's related to them, and Sai lies, saying that Jake is his little nephew. He even starts fantasizing that he's the boy's favorite uncle. Back to the Yorkins, Nina is tucking Jake to bed when he suddenly expresses that he feels bad for Sai because he's lonely. Nina comforts him by saying, that she thinks otherwise, but Nina couldn't be more wrong. Sai lives all alone in his house without any friend or family, and the only company he has is his pet hamster. His life is quite unlike the Yorkins, who he believes to be a perfect family. But like Nina, Sai isn't quite right either. Nina and Will spend the night arguing about their financial problems, while Jake could overhear their fight, saddening him. Though Sai lives an outwardly lonely life, there's still something for him to take solace in. Surprisingly, the man's walls are covered with collages of the Yorkins which are several photos taken over the course of many years. Needless to say, Sai is pretty damn obsessed with the family. The weekend has passed, and it's another Monday for Sai at work. Later on, he gets into a heated argument with the machine technician. Ever dedicated to his craft, Sai keeps pointing out an issue that the technician believes to be so trivial that no one else would even care about it. During break time, Sai is staring at the Yorkins' Christmas photo while fantasizing about celebrating with them. But suddenly, the store manager appears, ruining his daydream, to reprimand him for screaming at the technicians in front of the customers. Later on, Sai is about to return to the booth when he unexpectedly runs into Will. Sai is overjoyed to see the man in the flesh, but Will dislikes his over-friendliness. Nevertheless, Sai still assists him and compliments him for having a wonderful family and a beautiful house. Another guy shows up to assist Will, and while Sai is returning to his post, he accidentally bumps into Jake. To Sai's delight, the boy shows him the toy robot he wants to buy. Unlike his father, Jake adores Sai and treats him quite sweetly, but their little interaction gets interrupted when Will calls out to his son and reminds him not to get too close to strangers. When he isn't working, Sai spends time outside reading the book that Nina had an interest in. While looking around, he finds a store that sells old photographs and buys an old photo of a woman from it. Later that day, he begins to spy outside the Yorkin residence. But since the spying isn't enough to sate him, Sai proceeds to break into the house. While traversing the home, he discovers his photo pinned to the refrigerator door, along with the other family photos, and this brings a smile to his face. Oddly enough, Sai seems completely familiar with the house as he tours himself around, checking Jake's room and using their toilet. He even notices Will's clothes inside the couple's bedroom. He wears them. Even the family dog seems to know Sai because it doesn't bark at him. While watching TV, Sai doesn't notice that the front door is being unlocked until he hears the Yorkins entering the house. He panics, trying to figure out where he should hide, but it's too late for him to escape as the family's already seen him. But to his surprise, they act as though he's living with them all this time. This wistful little encounter counter shatters when it's revealed that Sai still camped outside the house and it's just one of his many fantasies. The following day at work, Sai has a customer named Maya. 
who is familiar to him and she claims to be working somewhere near the mall. At school, Jake is at soccer practice when he sees the photo guy waiting for him. Jake is puzzled by this, but Sai proceeds to give him the toy robot that he's been eyeing. Unfortunately for Sai, the kid declines the toy, knowing full well that his parents would be upset if he were to take it. Later on, at the mall's food court, Sai spots Nina and approaches her. They begin to chat about Jake, but Sai suddenly implies that he can be the Uncle Sai. This makes Nina distance herself, but just as she's about to leave, Sai immediately bursts out the same book that she's been reading. Nina gets excited upon seeing it, so she stays to talk about it. Their conversation shifts to him with Nina asking about his family, and he admits that he has no one. But Sai would then show her the photograph that he bought, claiming that she's his late mother. Hearing this, Nina grows sympathetic towards him and realizes that her son may be right when he said that Sai's a lonely man. The following day at work, the store manager summons Sai to question him about the discrepancies of photo printouts logged under his name. They haven't sold nearly as much as the photos they've printed, and though Sai strongly denies the accusation, the store manager still decides to fire him after his 11 years of service. The discrepancies aren't the only reason though. The manager points out that Sai's been spacing out a lot at work, causing scenes in front of customers, taking 90-minute breaks, and giving away free merchandise in the form of the disposable camera that Sai had given Jake for his birthday. Sai is absolutely mortified, and the sudden news has distracted him for the rest of the day. Things only pick up a bit for him when Nina and Jake arrive to process the photos in the camera that he gifted the boy. Nina notices that Sai looks unwell, but he lies, pretending that he's okay. Later that day, Sai is scanning Jake's photo shots and begins to cry. The man returns home to his empty, lonely house, where he's surrounded by the imagined warmth radiated by the many photos of the family that he doesn't even belong to. He proceeds to check one of the photos and there, he discovers that Maya is associated with Will Yorkin. On his last day of work, Sai secretly takes out Maya's processed photos. As he's scanning them, he discovers the woman's intimate images with Will. Discovering this affair breaks Sai's heart. He's alarmingly invested in them, and now, his fairy tale of a happy family is crumbling down. He thinks long and hard about what he should do, and soon, he decides to take out the package of Nina's processed photos. Sai would then bid his co-worker goodbye, who thanks him for everything that he had taught him. In turn, Sai asks him to not let the place go to crap before leaving. But while Sai is walking down the aisle, his face begins to reflect the rage that's been hiding with him. He steals a knife, then leaves the building. Outside the mall, he waits for Nina's arrival while he stays in his car, stealthily taking photos of her entering the mall. Nina then returns after picking up Jake's photos. With Nina driving off, Sai is quick to follow them. He notices her car abruptly pulling over, so he follows suit from a distance. In Nina's car, she is horrified to discover the photo of her husband kissing another woman. Though this already invasive job should have been done by now, he still worries about the family, so he continues to secretly follow Nina into their house. He spies on them like he's a paparazzi on a strict payroll, and he eventually watches them having dinner normally, happily even. It drives him mad to see them like this in spite of Nina's discovery. That night, Sai has a nightmare about him sleeping alone in an empty mall while standing. When his eyes open, blood gushes out like a faucet. Sai wakes up, catching his breath in horror. The following day, Sai returns to the mall as a customer, but the store manager suddenly blocks him and wants him out. But Sai convinces him to let him have his films developed as there is no law prohibiting him from being a customer after he was fired. And since the store manager doesn't want to make a scene, he follows Sai to do his business, but he makes sure to alert the guard to keep an eye on him. Later that day, Sai's ex-co-worker goes to the management office and hands in Sai's processed photos to the store manager. The manager gets furious upon discovering that the images are of his little daughter. As for Sai, he's now following Will and his mistress to a hotel. The store manager reports Sai's indirect threat to the authorities, leading to an investigation. The police officers enter Sai's home, and they are immediately greeted by the shrine to his disturbing obsession with the Yorkin family. Meanwhile, Sai intercepts the hotel operator hotline and pretends to be room service to know Will and Maya's room number. Meanwhile, the investigators are informing Nina about Sai, and they show her a photo with Will's face crashed out. Sai manages to check into the hotel, and he immediately goes to knock on Will and Maya's room, still pretending to be room service. Maya opens the door, and Sai immediately enters, catching the both of them with just their bathrobes on. While the investigators are on their way to the hotel, Sai reveals that he's armed with a knife. He forces the terrified lovers into stripping completely, and he makes them pretend that they are touching each other. Will and Maya are forced to pose in sensual photos, all for their armed intruder to take photos of. Pretend! This is all pretend! Sai would yell to spur them into complying. After that harrowing display, Sai enters a room on the same floor to rest. Half an hour passes, and the detectives finally arrive at the hotel. They break into Sai's room, but the man is nowhere to be found. He's already running through the kitchen area before escaping through the fire exit, but by the time he's gotten out, the police cars surround him while demanding him to surrender. The detectives head to the lover's room, where they find Maya showering in a 
days while Will is physically unharmed. As the police arrest him, Sai cries out that he was just taking pictures. That night, Nina and Jake are waiting at their house until Will arrives, accompanied by an investigator. Upon seeing him, Jake immediately goes to hug his father. Will returns his son's embrace and he and his wife share a somber look. At the police station, Sai tries to ask the detective if he's a family man. The detective calmly asserts that he'll be the one asking questions, to which Sai politely agrees. Still, he goes on to tell him his impression of him. Sai can tell by the ring on the detective's finger and the way that he has treated him so far that he is, indeed, a family man. He also describes him as a good man who would never cheat on his wife, betray his family's trust, or neglect or hurt his child. At this point, a deeply sad look crosses Sai's features. He looks lost, broken. With his emotions getting the better of him, Sai is practically in tears as he continues. He claims that the detective would never make horrible demands of his children and that he would never ask his children to do things that children shouldn't do. His voice breaks and Sai loses control for a moment when he yells in despair that he would never take sick and degrading pictures of his children doing these things. In his harrowing moment of vulnerability, Sai has hinted at the horrible, horrible things that his own father had done to him, things that have deeply damaged him and continue to damage him until today. The detective watches him with restraint, though it's clear that Sai's bleak words have gotten to him. More quietly now, Sai longingly and regretfully says that Will had it all and he threw it all away. After watching Sai unravel before him, the detective looks more sympathetic. He says that he understands now and thanks Sai for answering him candidly. Before the detective leaves, Sai requests to see his pictures. The investigator observes Sai from a distance while he carefully places each photo on the table. It turns out that they are just snapshots of mundane things in the hotel room, from the remote control to the keys, the shower curtain and the sink. The detective leaves Sai alone to stare intently at the pictures, with fascination at first, which then melts into something more solemn. In the end, there is a photo of Sai together with the whole Yorkin family. They are all smiling, everyone looks happy, but the photo may just be another fantasy for Sai. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.